Transition Tuesday. I'm Jane. This is Joe. So full disclosure, Joe does not really like this topic that we've chosen for this week. He's a trooper, so he's agreed that we'll do it. Mama's sick. Or, Mama's sick? Mama gets sick. Dad gets sick. Caregivers get <clears throat> sick. It's a fact. Sometimes they get really sick with a long-term illness or an illness that's going to require uh, help around the house because the family member can no longer lift 70 pounds or has to go to a lot of doctor's office visits and isn't as on a hand or hands-on as they were. Um, I was thinking about this because a friend of mine um, who is a parent mentor up in Union County recently had an illness and she uh, was talking about how challenging it is when you have a child with a disability at home or even if you don't, if you're a full-time mom or a full-time dad or a full-time grandparent and you get sick and you have other people to care for, it's challenging. So Becky was kind enough to come up with some tips so you can plan. Now, you may be thinking, now, how is this a Transition Tuesday topic? This is like not about transition, but my friends, it is. It's about independence. It's about planning and it's about independence because if your person is independent or more independent mm -hmm. or can practice these independent skills, then if you get sick, you know that, well, we're covered. So yes, this is a transition topic. Here are some of Becky's tips. Keep normal routines. Write things down. And plan when you're healthy. Thank you, Becky. Awesome tips. So keep a normal routine. What that means is like, your kid still needs to go to school. Uh, other people in the house need to go to work. Um, if you're doing distance learning, um, you know, uh, maybe make a plan with teachers for um, if you're under the weather or you have a doctor's appointment, you know, keep teachers in the loop, whether you're in person or distance. Either way, that's a good idea. Um, if the person is involved in regular activities, make sure that Maybe you have a friend who can take your kid to ball practice or um, club meetings or, you know, with COVID, some of those things aren't happening anyway. But, you know, for many people, especially those on the autism spectrum, routine is very, very important to them. So how do you keep that going even though, you know, the main taxi cab driver isn't available this week? Mm -hmm. So that's uh, very important. And um, writing down all those tasks that you do as caregiver on a weekly basis. You know, a lot of people have the, the big calendar in the kitchen um, or the big calendar, shared Google calendar on your phone. Those are good things to share because then dad or friend or whoever's like, oh yeah, I have to pick up Joe for a ball game on Tuesday afternoon. So you're sharing, you know, the information. Mm -hmm. And then planning when you're healthy is a good idea. Um, Becky said that she didn't really have a plan, but the experience kind of made her realize how important that is. So Joe, I have a question for you. We have experienced some health emergencies in our family with caregivers. 
Joe, do you get nervous when mom or dad gets sick? Yes or no? Do you get nervous? Yes. Yeah. When you have to go to the hospital, is it scary? When you've had to go to the hospital, did you think it was a scary experience? Yes? Yes or no? Is going to the hospital a scary experience? Yes. It is scary. So you worry about people when they have to go to the hospital, right? You worry about people when they have to go to the hospital? Yes or no? <clears throat> I see your smile. Do you worry about people when they have to go to the hospital? You're doing a good job answering. This last question, yes. Yeah, so for somebody who's nonverbal or maybe, um, you know, depends on people for a lot of different things, you know, that you getting sick is really scary for them. And so planning ahead and giving them some independence and some ability to have control over things in their lives is a really important thing. So here are some more tips from my friend Becky. Keep a notebook. So before she said, write it down. Well, in this case, she has a notebook. In that notebook, you want to put medications, doses, times, when does the person take that medication, doctor contact info, um, mom tips, that's what I call them, like favorite activities, favorite foods, foods to avoid, things that moms or dads know that other people may not know because mom's always doing the caregiving. So mom knows, okay, Joe really, really, really hates um, bananas. So do not offer bananas as a snack. Things like that. Strategies to help dissolve, avoid behaviors. So, um, you know, um, like I know that um, Joe needs a little bit of time to answer a question and he may do, you know, this spasticity thing. And so a caregiver who isn't used to seeing him all the time may not know that. Or even someone who does see him often may not know that that's not always a reaction to the question. It's just Joe trying to activate his body a lot of times. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it is a problem. But, you know, um, <clears throat> you, just being able to put all those things in the notebook you know, it's good for you as a caregiver because then you can go, shoot, if something does happen to me, if God forbid I'm in a car accident or something, all of this stuff is written down so anybody can pitch in Johnny on the spot. Passwords. Oh, this is the bane of my existence. I am so bad at keeping track of paperwork as it is and passwords are just the bane of my existence just that's the truth of it so keep a password list for example joe's comp waiver there's a payroll document that has to be filled out twice a month you have to have the password to fill that out if something happened to me and my husband jerry had to um, fill out that paperwork he would have to know that password. So it's really important to have things like that written down and accessible in a safe, secure way, of course, for the person or persons who are going to help with caregiving. Okay, 
more Becky's tips. You know, decide who your substitutes are gonna be. And this is important for um, car pickups at school. We kind of already talked about the calendar, but car pickups at school or from different places. You know, do you have somebody on your emergency contact list that is a non-family member? Someone who maybe who works at the school, who knows your kid, who your kid feels safe going home with? Those kinds of conversations should happen. Even if you're doing um, on uh, distance learning, you should still have those conversations like for doctor's appointments or you know, anytime your child has to leave with somebody else, you know, that's an important thing to do for appointments. And then, you know, special notes. Like, what if you write the caregiver, you know, like little notes? Like, gee, I really appreciate you. Here's a coupon for a free hug. Because we all need that. And hopefully you will never need these things, but maybe if you plan ahead, you know, um, you've got it covered and it's one less thing you have to be stressed out about. Lord knows there's enough to be stressed about. So anyway, um, stay healthy and we will see you next week.